Hey good folks, I'm Ben Avram here for CG Tuts and welcome to the fourth part of this ice cream bar tutorial. In the previous tutorial we have finished the simulation for the chocolate dripping on the ice cream bar and in this tutorial we'll build a mesh around the particles and after that import it into Maya and build a shader for it. I have made two changes to the simulation and to the ice cream bar since the last time we've seen it. As for the circular meter goes, I have uh, decreased the amount of particles from 310,000 to 270,000. Let's uh, take a look at how it looks. As you can see the simulation is still very chocolate-like. You can really see the folding here and all over the place actually. And the result we get is covering less of the chocolate bar. It's a matter of taste. In Maya, at the previous tutorial, we have uh, scaled down the ice cream bar to 0.7. And I found that it is better for me to decrease the size to 0.5. After decreasing the size to 0.5, I went to edit date by type history and modify freeze transformation which makes it the default state. Same goes for the other ice cream bar. Let's go back to real flow. At the moment real flow is reading these particles from the cache. That is possible to work this way but it's not the fastest way to work. I would like to import the rendered particles and use them instead of using the cache. So first I'll mark the circle and make sure it's set to cache by hitting this yellow button or by going to node and switching the simulation from active to cache which makes this circle yellow and that way we know that it is now cached and won't be calculated once we simulate again. So now to import the rendered particles we need to go to the emitters and down here we have the binary loader. Let's hit on it. And in the binary loader, under binary loader, we have bin sequence. If we'll hit on it, it will take us straight to the real flow folder. And under particles, we have the rendered particles, which we'll mark the first one and hit open. If let's uh, hide the, the original emitter under display, go to visible and hit change yes to no. And right now we are looking at the binary loader. See how it highlights when I hit it? So right now we are not using the particles from the cache, we are using the rendered particles which we imported into real flow. That will give us a slightly faster workflow. Our next step is to build a mesh around the particles. We'll go to this button here which is the mesh menu hit on it once and we have four kinds of meshes here. We have the render kit mesh which is new to Reflow 5. We have the standard mesh which has been used in version 4 and below it. And we have the grid mesh which is used in the grid based particle emitters or hybrido emitters which are not part of this tutorial. And we are going to use the particle mesh render kit, the first one. At the moment it's not connected to anything. So we'll need to go to the particle mesh, right click on it and mark insert emitters. And from the menu we'll choose the binary loader and hit OK. We are using the default state. Let's take a quick look at how it looks. Right click on the particle mesh and hit build. This will build just this certain frame. And let's turn off the visibility for the binary loader just to be able to see it a bit better. And hit zero on the numpad to see the shaded view. And as you can see it's not bad at all. But obviously we can uh, we can make it better. Let's mark again the mesh. First attribute is build and right now it's set to yes. We can change it to no. What it does really is just affects whether this uh, mesh that you are building is written to disk or not. If you choose no, you are still able to simulate the mesh build, but it won't be written into disk and you won't really be able to do anything with it. So uh, we'll set it to yes, 
obviously. We have two types that we can use. We have the spheres and the metavolts. Now, the metavolts tend to get a bit, a bit larger in mass as opposed to the spheres, but uh, it's a bit more accurate for my taste. Um, let's actually go one frame forward and build this mesh. And immediately you can see the difference. Same settings, just this is spheres and this is the metaballs. And it's larger in mass. And obviously it needs some work. So let's uh, continue on working on it. Polygon size. At the moment the polygon size is uh, actually very good. But we can get even into higher details. It will decrease the polygon size. I found that 0 0.0. Free works best for me. Build it again. We'll move on to the filters. Now the filters by default isn't enabled, so we'll enable it. We'll switch no to yes. Let's take it one frame forward and test it with the default settings. Not much of a difference, so what we would need to do is a apply some changes to the filters settings. Uh, first we'll start with the relaxation and you shouldn't really take it too high. Uh, at some point the mesh will just uh, won't build or disappear. I found that 0.4 works best for me. Now the steps is similar to the sub steps, the simulation options and you actually do want more than one step in the filters I usually would start with 64, so let's uh, do a quick render and see how it looks. And as you can see, the mesh is now a lot smoother, a lot closer to what we are, we are after really. And not to beat you around the bush, the settings that I finally used would be relaxation point 4, tension point 4 as well, which helps the mesh to be a bit more tight, and the steps. 240 which result in a very smooth mesh however at very few selected frames the amount of steps was too high so I got uh, no mesh at all I got some blank uh, frames and so I had to go back and lower the amount of steps to 239 or 238 and just for those single frames we build the mesh we have another option here called Optimize and if we'll enable it to Curvature the default settings I find to be working the best let's go one frame forward and build this mesh not much of a difference in the mesh not visible anyway but however we do get a lower amount of polygons 90% of the amount we had before you can see that the mesh is thick at some points and a bit more thin in other places. If you choose to optimize, Realflow would uh, do its best to lower the amount of polygons where it's not that needed and increase it where it is needed. It's a good option to know of. It helps you to speed up your render time. I'm pretty happy with this result. So we'll go to the start of our animation mark our particle mesh and now to simulate all the mesh from start to end we need to go to this button right here click on it and there you go we'll let it uh, run its full course it won't take as long as the uh, particles I'll pause the recording and I'll come back when it's done the meshing is done we are all finished with real flow let's switch into Maya now let's first import our melting chocolate mesh so we'll go into the last button the import a bin mesh in the real flow files under chocolate simulation in meshes we have the rendered bin sequence we'll load it we have an option to offset the sequence which we do need but at the moment i'll leave it at zero because i want to show you a way of altering the offset later on inside maya hit on create and there's our mesh. Our timeline is ending too early. And other than that, we are in the wrong frame rate. So let's uh, create some quick adjustments. 
go into options in settings first we are not using 25 frames per second anymore we are now using 200 and hit save and we want 600 frames and now let's see there is a mesh melting all over the chocolate my bad sorry we don't want 600 we need 1200 frames so now we have the same frame rate in Maya as well as in real flow and the sequence is now starting and ending too early we want the sequence to start at 600 and end in 1200 and to control that we can mark real flow mesh and hit control A to get to the attributes or just go to the attribute editor and here under real flow mesh source 1 we can sequence the offset and we want to start at 600 at 600 it starts and ends at 1200 we have one more thing to take care of and that is that we have this uh, cube which is a present from frame 0 to frame 599 so to take care of that let's go into frame 599 and switch back to channel box switch the visibility to 0 or off and right click key selected go one frame forward and switch it to on or one and there you go that takes care of that I think I would like to have the back side uh, facing the camera simply because it uh, breaks a, a bit less than the front side so we'll rotate it on the y-axis to 180 degrees rename this to chocolate and we'll place this in the ice cream bar melting chocolate let's create the shader for, for the melting chocolate so let's go into hypershade and under melt array we are looking for Maya material X passes and first things first let's rename it to chocolate melting shader for the color we are going to use the exact same color we used for the coated one so that will be 0 0.039 by 0 0.017 by 0 0.008 very dark brown we're going to leave the weight as it is and change the roughness to 0.5 for the reflection we're going to set the reflectivity to 0.8 so that will make a highly reflective surface but a slightly just very slightly rough so we won't have such an accurate reflection and keep your eye on the specularity point here and you can see what I mean if I'll switch it from 1 to 0.650 we'll get a uh, just a bit, just a little bit less accurate um, reflection and we'll change the glossy samples to 74 I would like to have some more control over the reflectivity I would like to be able to control how tight the reflection is and to do that we'll create a nice little trick and let's create a ramp shader and now we are looking for sampler info there it is now we want to connect the sampler info to the ramp click hold on the middle mouse drag to the ramp and let go and then we need to choose other we have the connection editor opened up and we want to connect the facing ratio to the UV cord hit the little plus sign to the V cord and that's it let's close it up and let's go into the ramp shader we don't need the middle one we want to set the top to black and the bottom to white and now if we'll go into the chocolate uh, melting shader we'll just need to drop the ramp into the color and now we have a much uh, higher control over how tight the reflection is if we'll take down the black we'll get a much uh, tighter reflection if we we'll raise up the white we'll have a wider reflection and of course we can change either one of those to any shade of gray to get uh, different results let's uh, apply the material we just created to the mesh and let's take a quick preview to see how it looks when the settings are the same as we left them in when we worked on the chocolate chunks but uh, you can really see the, the type of reflection we are getting we can see on this on the edges the, the ramp and the sampler info are 
controlling the, the tightness of the reflection and we can see we have a very nice reflection over here from the HDR image all in all a very good material so our next step would be to create the animation the animation part is actually going to be a very very simple one the only thing we want is to have the bar rotate on the Y axis both the bars need to do that we have to remember that we want to blend them over the last 200 frames. Let's uh, begin with the animation. Mark the ice cream bar melting chocolate. And we'll create a keyframe in frame 1. Right click on rotate Y and key selected. In frame 600, we'll change the rotation to 330. And in the last frame, 1200, we'll change the animation to 580. So this will be the slow motion part. If we'll hide this one for a second, Ctrl H, and reveal this one for a second, Shift H, we know that we want to blend the two ice cream bars over 200 frames. So at frame 200, we'll have it rot rotated to 580, and we'll hit key selected. Now to check out what will be the frame 1 value, we'll go back to the ice cream bar melting chocolate and check the Y rotation on frame 1000 and we can actually just copy this and go to the ice cream bar coded paste it for Y rotation in frame 1 and the animations are now identical go over to frame 600 and set it to 540 so we'll have a slight rotate back to the other side animation one last thing I would like to create before we end up this uh, this lesson is create a plane which will act as my floor. I'll just uh, set it to D. And let me just go over to side view and raise it a bit above. Something like this should be fine. And this uh, plane will act as my shadow catcher. Let's uh, increase the values here to, let's say, I don't know, 25 on 25. As I said, this uh, plane would act as my shadow catcher, which I'm going to use in the compositing portion of the tutorial. Actually, I want to move the backdrop a bit to the back, so the shadow catcher won't uh, get cut off. This should be fine. Now, let's just rename this to shadow catcher. And just to put things in order here, let's group all of these, and we'll rename it to studio and we actually don't really need those anymore, let's delete those. In the next lesson, we'll separate all of our elements into separate render layers, and those will be beauty, ambient occlusion, RGB, and of course, the floor shadow. After that, rendering, and jump straight into After Effects. <laughs>